Hey, uh, good <laughs> luck and all the best, says David Armshaw. Thank you very much. Why, why, why don't you love us anymore? Sorry, but this letter really has to turn into a pathetic pile of snivelling, sobbing pity. Let the tale of woe commence. I came back from Athens on Saturday morning, having been travelling for nigh on 18 hours, had a chest infection from the pollution. I fell up an ancient Greek step and cut my knee open. I wrenched my arm out of its socket, answering my alarm call. Come on Sunday, I'm OK, I'm back in England. Land of Animal Lovers and Samantha Sunday Night Party. I wait eagerly to enter Samantha Meadum and to be cradled and reassured by the programme. But what do I hear? You're leaving us. I only just started to listen. What will Amy and I talk about <laughs> on Monday mornings? Um, I love you, really. I hope you get a nice uh, fitted kitchen out of it. Uh, that's about my new job, because I've just missed out a whole chunk of this letter. Can I have a photo just for old time's sake, please? Ian, hurrah for you. I love Echo Belly and Mark Radcliffe. That's you are um, a rock of stability I can cling to in the swimming storm rack, storm racked sea that is my life. I just hope I don't vomit on your head. Samantha <laughs> Lear, <laughs> the Davies household salutes you. All the best. Good luck. Blah, blah. It looks as though uh, I might have made it to the end without breaking down, says Rhiannon Davies. Thank you very, very much. And, um... I didn't want to leave. I've had to leave because logistically with the job that I'm doing, I can't do this show as well. And for obvious reasons, they won't let me pre-record it. And I really, really don't want to have to leave, unfortunately. I got her. Should we have more interviews so we can get them all in before the end of the programme so people yes. will be able yes. to tell how many famous people I've met? Yeah. Okay, this is, uh, this is one of my favourites, actually. This is me and Bob Holness. A whole run of something has come to an end, like that, for instance. Um, the Late Night Extra came to an end, the Thames television thing came to an end, and I thought, oh, I'm out of work again. Suddenly, LBC started, and they rang up and said, will you join us? Lovely. <laughs> then I left the helicopter and went down into the studio, and for ten years I presented the early morning show with Dougie Cameron. That meant getting up at 3.30 in the morning. For I think I could quite bear Yes, that. you could, Samantha. You could do anything. Yes. I can see that. Oh, Bob. Thank you, Simpa, Simpa. <laughs> mm. Before we go, I, I have to say I've written you a love poem. Oh, dear. It's very beautiful. I wrote it at 8.30 this morning, so... I wasn't expecting this. Uh, no, I, I know you weren't, Bob. And it's called, it's it's a beautiful thing, this, Bob. And it's actually called... And I've, I've spent a long time thinking of what to call it. I've actually got to go and get ready, Samantha. Do you, do you think I've got time to say and listen it, it's, to it? It's quite short, and is it's it, called uh, Bob. Is it, Samantha? Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, fine. <laughs> You'll love this, Bob. Yes, I'm sure I will. Oh, Samantha. dearest Bobby, in your suits of grey. Oh, gosh. Let's push the boat out, and let's gold run away. Oh, yes. Because, you know, you're a god to me. Oh. So go on, Robert. Give me a pee. Oh. It wouldn't be forever, and your hedgehog could come too. It's just... Just you see, I have this fantasy of standing on the hot spot with you. Look, I know the girl you see before you is overcome and flustered, but put your finger on my buzzer, Bob, and let's play blockbusters. Well, I, 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 I'm quite overwhelmed, Samantha. I hardly know. It's very freestyle, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, it yes. is, yes. I, I'm quite impressed. It is, how shall I put it? It is... Beautiful. Different. <laughs> Good old Bob, what a guy. Um, now, the last of the, alas, a, a lot of the music sessions that have been done for us by local bands were done live. So there's no Big Mouth and no Lou Dalgleish, no Jerry Colvin, and we haven't kept tapes of them, unfortunately. Um, that's why we've got Ian Brodie and the Bare Naked Ladies. And when they came into the studio, it was so thrilling. It was like, wow, here I am in the same space and breathing the same air as the Bare Naked Ladies. And um, they were fab, and they sang, and they said it was the best interview they'd ever done so uh, here they are singing life in a nutshell it is and life in a nutshell and this is me and frank skinner we get to meet des o'connor because well I'm you not don't frank know that skinner. if you could be on my arm at a showbiz party sam oh. and uh, you might be there oh frank yeah you'll, you'll, right. you'll turn my head at this right. rate and um, it sounds like this is probably what rod hall said to you <laughs> when they first met you could be on my arm at a showbiz party <laughs> <laughs> oh, 10 o'clock in the morning and I've still got it. Still isn't it, got it, isn't it great? It's incredible. So so what was Des like? He's oh. very nice. Do you know he used to live in Penn's Net? Did you know that? <laughs> Do you know Penn's Net? No. It's sort of out by Briley Hill. Oh, really? In the very heart of the black country. And I think his first wife uh, came from there. So he lived there for, for quite a bit. So we, sh we swap sort of black country anecdotes. And also, what I was really interested in, because I'm a bit of an old rock and roller, uh, Des 
was the warm-up act when Body Holly did his one and only tour of Great Britain. Really? So, uh, yeah, Dares used to go on and uh, do a few gags and, and die terribly, so he told me. And then Body would go on and store me. But then, of course, Body died terribly as well. That's sad. Mm. Very, very tragic. But Des lives on. He and that's does. What counts, and, in th my and that's opinion. what's really important. As long as Des O'Connor tonight is still on the television, then I have all the, the faith in the British but, entertainment. But industry. it's a good show, Sam, isn't it? I mean, look at that show the other night. Apart from the fact that me, me was on. <laughs> Let's forget English grammar for a second. There's Jason Donovan, you Cher. That show. Oh yeah. I saw that show. Why didn't I see you? Maybe we didn't get you in London. I've actually, I just, I've been talking to my sister-in-law like, just the, earlier today, and uh, I haven't seen her for a while. And uh, <laughs> she's not, she's just not exactly my biggest fan, but she's sort of <laughs> polite with it. And she said, uh, she said, oh, I thought you looked very smart on Des O'Connor. I said, oh, did you watch that interview? She said, well, I watched the beginning of it. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, did you get to hobnob in, in hospitality with Cher and Jace? Well, no, a Jace was about, but um, he didn't have any shoes and socks on, so I still I kept well clear. Um, I don't know why that was, but well, you Cher, to I, suck his toes. I, you know, really, you're dabbling with a terrible <laughs> libel suit, which could close down the whole of Radio WF. <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? Yes, I should make it absolutely clear that he, was, he looked incredibly sort of hairy and male when yes. we met that point, and so did Cher, which was completely very unnerving. <laughs> The wonderful Frank Skinner, um, last year, in fact, on Samantha's Sunday night party. Right, um, another quick letter. Oh, no, only six minutes to go on Samantha's Sunday night party. It's so sad for the attention of Samantha Mia. I've listened to your show absolutely... Um, I've listened to your absolutely fabulous show for over three years now, but I've never written to you because I always thought people who write to radio DJs were a little sad. But as you've just announced your abdication as the, as the Queen of Sunday nights, I've held a hat to forget my snobbery and dump the microcosm of street cred I possess <laughs> to write a gushing fan letter. First of all, thank you for making life in Northamptonshire a little more bearable. Um, sorry, I'm paraphrasing here. You brightened up Sundays for me because Sunday is a horrible day. There's always homework you've left. Um, with to the last minute because it's so boring there's all the horrible tacky hypocritical sexist do. homophobic tabloids to read sunday dinner need i say more and the records you like most that week always falls down the chart and monday morning is round the corner but you and your show has made it all worthwhile you're up there with madonna as one of my favorite celebrities as i as i've mentioned but madonna thank you for supporting her she's a fantastic pop star and a hell of a lot more interesting than celine dion whitney houston and, and mariah carey and samantha's or, Samantha's book of photographs is out <laughs> shortly. Also, thank you for not playing any of the bland noises of any of the three aforementioned singers and those by Take That Oasis and Gloria Estefan. Uh, such has been your influence on me that Walking on Sunshine and No Memory are two of my favourite happy, jolly, feel-good summary songs. You'll be sorely missed on Sundays, uh, but that's no reason to feel down because I can wake up to you and Sean... Ooh! 